Hey guys, I'm going to walk you through uh, installing and configuring Lab Assistant. Um, so, first thing we're going to do is um, I'm going to show you that you how to find and install Tamper Monkey, which is kind of needed to run those um, Lab Assistant JavaScripts. So you just want to go to tampermonkey.net and you want to avoid anything that says download in a big green button because that's probably just an ad. <laughs> go down to the download section here and where it says Tamper Monkey, get it from the store. And then there'll be, I already have it installed, but it's just a Chrome extension. It's super easy to install. Once it gets installed, then you have this um, icon up here and a context menu. And we can go to the dashboard and take a look at, I actually have both of these scripts installed already and running, but I'm going to go ahead and remove them and show you how to install the lab assistant. So um, let's go to github.com. I'm sure you'll put this also in the link. Um, but we're going to go to um, a page called I'm Groovin. And this team has put together a number of useful Star Atlas utilities. Um, the one we're focused on today is a Lab Assistant. And Lab Assistant has two components. One is to control the permissions if you are splitting the role of owner and operator. Um, if you are an owner and you don't have much interest in playing the game, then you can pass off the configuration of your gaming loops to somebody else who has taken the time to optimize uh, the productivity of those um, assets. Um, and then the other script is the lab assistant itself. And we are going to, first of all, I want to take a look at the readme file because it does go over some terminology, the handler account. Again, this is the owner account, owns the assets, can interact with the assets in Sage Labs, which is the Sage game. Um, and then the Lancer account is just somebody who can run or configure the lab assistant on behalf of the handler account. So this Lancer account cannot get into and interact with um, the handler's account in the Sage game, all right, which is really nice. And then there's some other interesting information here um, and some use cases. I personally am an owner operator, so I'm going to use the same account for both um, the handler and the Lancer account. All right, so this is the JavaScript here. If you're concerned about um, is this script going to drain my account, which is always a good red flag for anybody uh, to raise as they're looking at using other people's scripts with relation to accessing their wallets. One thing you can do, one thing that I do is I go into ChatGPT and I run the script piece by piece and ask ChatGPT to explain to me what's going on. So uh, up at the top here, it's, I have some JavaScript code. I'd like you to explain it. I will submit the code in small increments. Here's the first part. And then I just cut and paste the first part of the script. You don't want to paste too much in because ChatGPT can't handle a lot at a time. Um, so it'll go and, and explain what the various variables and functions are doing in the code. And then I paste the next piece of script and it'll explain what that's doing and so on and so forth. So this is probably not a bad idea um, just to give yourself a peace of mind. You can also look at um, Discord and all of the people who are using this script and what they have to say about it. I think there might be some people that talk about it on Twitter as well. And I want to say like the Sly Guild who puts this script out is, has some kind of relationship, official relationship with Star Atlas. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think that's the case. Okay, so back to the actual script. Um, this script right here, the way I install it, I, they do give you some directions in the readme file, which I found to be a little tiny bit confusing. So I just go into, click on the raw up here in the right-hand corner, and then you'll see an install button. 
I'm reinstalling it since I've already installed it. And then we'll come down here to the Sly Lab Assistant JavaScript, which is the other major component. Um, let's take a look at the README file real quick. It kind of tells you what it does. Um, here's what Lab Assistant can do for you. It can set your uh, gaming loops up to scan, to transport, and to mine. Okay, and you designate where you want to mine, where you want to bring the resources back to, same with the scanning. Um, transport, you can say what I want to pick up from one starbase and what I want to drop off and pick up from another starbase and bring it back to the main starbase. So we have targets and starbases. Um, what it can't do is put your fleets together. Uh, it cannot, um, in the beginning, you'll want to undock your fleets. Uh, before you run the script, you'll want to put your fleets together, load them up with fuel, toolkits, food, whatever resources you need for what you're trying to do, and then undock the fleet. Um, and then at that point, you can run uh, the lab assistant. Okay. Some other things, some little caveats and gotchas. Uh, scanning does not support multi-jump warping, so you want to if you want to make sure you're optimizing the productivity of your scanners, you'll want to keep them within one warp range of the starbase that they're dropping the SDUs off at. Um, what else? Just read through the README. It's it's not that long. And it's, and it's got a little few little caveats and gotchas. They talk about building your own browser field version, browser, browser verified version or whatever. No idea what that means. Someday I'll figure it out though. Maybe ChatGPT will help me. All right, so we are going to now also install the lab assistant the way, same way we installed the freelance system core by going to the JavaScript, clicking on raw and clicking on install or reinstall in my case. All right, now we can go to Tamper Monkey uh, to the dashboard. And there's our two scripts that are running. And when I get into the labs.starls.com uh, web page, they'll fire up and be at the ready for your instructions. OK, so let's do that. All right, so you have Lab Assistant up here in the left-hand corner. And the first thing you want to do is set the permissions on your, your Lancer account or your contractor account. Again, I'm an owner and a contractor. There's two roles, and I'm fulfilling both of those roles. And I think a lot of people, that's how they're, they're working at this point. So I've got my main wallet, the same wallet that owns the assets. OK. Um, we'll, you might see this button say wait for a very long time, especially when you first get into the game. Be patient. It's trying to gather information about all of your fleets, and there's a lot of information to gather. Okay, um, But before you start, remember you need to undock your fleets, um, and you should probably configure them first. So let's go into the configuration tool. If you go to Tools, Configure. All of mine are configured, but they're, it's fairly intuitive. Like, for example, this uh, fleet called Mining Meg. Um, if you go to the scroll down list, it's mining. Uh, the target is negative 2232, which is MRZ29. Um, the starbase is negative 4030, which is the ONI CSS or ONI1. And out there, it's mining luminite. Fairly straightforward. And this is kind of the information that it's collecting when it when you first fire it up. Like, what's your cargo space? What's your ammo space? What's your fuel space? Um, all right, so I've got a couple of miners that go out and mine aluminite at the moment. Uh, all of my scanners, let's actually pull up. Eve I, which has an eye on my fleets. And if I refresh, it should show that we've got some mining going on out here at MRC 29.
Um, with regards to scanning, you'll want to pick, like I said, a star base where you want your scanners to be, okay? Um, or scan close to. So that let's say I specify I want a scanner here, and once it's done scanning and it's run out of toolkits, I want it to go back to MRZ26 and grab more toolkits and maybe grab more fuel, okay? Mine is MRZ36 because it's just above the high uh, risk zone. And I think, I mean, it doesn't look like it right now, but usually it's, it's got some good, good scanning rates. But here's what I would recommend is I would subwarp all of your scanners out to whatever star base you want them to, to be based out of. Fuel up, of course, you'll have all of your toolkits and then undock them and start the scanning loop at that point. And that way, and I would, again, keep them all within one warp range of your star base. Um, that way they can warp back and forth. Subwarping takes a lot of time and it's taking away from your, the productivity of your scanners. Okay. Let's go back and look at the configuration. So all I did is I just put the coordinates of where I wanted these scanners to drop and scan and they just they're all day long and scan until they run out of toolkits. Um, they get down to about 10 toolkits. Then they're going to go back to 016, which is MRZ36. Um, drop the SDUs, grab some more toolkits, and head out to their designated scanning spot. Uh, and then the only other thing is option besides scanning and mining is transport. And I have this one transport fleet that takes out to MRZ36, I'm going to take a bunch of toolkits, fuel, it takes those things out to the starbase, and then from the starbase, let's see, to the target, we're taking toolkits and fuel, and then back to the starbase, we're going to grab 5,000 SDUs and take them back. So this runs on roughly a six-hour loop. So every six hours, it's dropping off this many toolkits, dropping off this much fuel, picking up this much SDUs and dropping them off at the Starbase, right? Configuration is super, super simple, very intuitive. Click on save, remember to undock your stuff and start it up. Now, my stuff is, was already running and if, if you're, for example, if your miners are mining and they're in the middle of a mining operation and you stop the lab assistant, they're gonna continue to mine. Um, your scanners are going to stop scanning, though, until um, they're triggered to scan again. Yeah, maybe not. They might continue scanning. Um, this, I think this lab assistant just kicks in at certain trigger points. Like, for example, when the scanners run low, or when the mining is done, or when the sub or when they get to their destination, that type of thing. So, once you start it, then you can monitor its status by clicking on status. And we can see here that um, my miners are in the middle of mining. I've got a while to go. Uh, my transport is en route. Um, the transport subwarp so that it can save gas and drop some gas at the uh, destination or the target. And then you see all of my miners. Um, this guy is warping. He probably has quite a bit of SDUs that he's going to drop at the star base. But that's it. It's pretty straightforward. And I do want to go back here and point one more thing out. If we go to I, I'm Grooving page. I want to say somewhere on this guy's page is a, is a crypto address. Is it here? Yes. This guy has a crypto address. This tool is so good. If you find that you're making a lot of money on this tool, give this guy something. Make sure you put him in your 
frequent addresses and periodically shoot him some something. Um, same with these guys. These guys are actually evi.sol, um, easy address to remember. Put those two, because these are two very useful tools, and I think if you start making a lot of money in Sage Labs as opposed to SCORE, you should definitely pay them. And that's it.